As every good businessman or woman knows, it's no good making a brilliant video game if no one's going to buy it, which is why so much money is poured into advertising with um, over... Um, oh, where's the... Uh, anyway, you don't want to listen to me listing off random factoids about the economics of the video games industry. That's what Worst Games Ever is for! What you are here for is to see a load of adverts that are meant to market video games or consoles that either succeeded in the best way or fail in the most bizarre. And while we can neither confirm nor deny the quality of the following, their inclusion here doesn't necessarily mean they're bad or even good. It just means that they are, in one way or another, just a little bit strange. Art is subjective after all. Should we look at some? Let's look at some. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 most bizarre video game adverts. Number 10. Standoff. Xbox 360. When will someone put a stop to this finger gun crime wave? Advertising the Xbox 360, this advert was brought to us by marketing agencies 72 and Sunny and McCann Erickson of I'd Like to Teach the World to Sing fame as a way of showing off the communal feelings that supposedly imbued the console. Showing a busy train station being drawn to a halt by, surprisingly enough, a standoff between the travellers brandishing literal handguns at one another, it's not long before one stray bang sends everyone into a miming frenzy, gunning people down without hesitation, remorse, or bullets. Unfortunately, it wasn't run in syndication on television and was instead only shown to select audiences at the Zero Hour launch event, but was then uploaded to the internet, where it's since enjoyed massive success. You have to admire everyone's devotion to realism too, with a window cleaner falling off his platform and dangling from his harness, bikers pulling wheelies while brandishing invisible shotguns, and everyone being entirely in sync with one another from the moment the first handgun is pulled. Although having said that, you just know there's going to be that one person who refuses to accept they've been hit and so keep playing anyway, spoiling the fun for everyone. Number 9. Kevin Butler, PlayStation 3. Kevin Butler was a fictional spokesman created to act as host for the 2009-2011 PS3 ad campaign It Only Does Everything. Played by Jerry Lambert, Butler appeared in countless ads as a way of pitching the console's numerous features, including the PlayStation Move, PlayStation Network, and the PS3's Wi-Fi and internet browsing capabilities. The framing of the videos would mean he'd usually appear to answer apparent complaints from customers about the console before happily, if not a little bit condescendingly, explaining it to them. However, Kevin wouldn't be a true spokesman for a company without some controversy. His first advert drew criticism for the line, You can't believe everything you read on the internet, otherwise I'd be a Nigerian millionaire by now, which was accused as being an unwarranted attack on the reputation and image of the country by the Nigerian Minister of Information and Communication. But after this slap on the wrist, the line was replaced by, you can't believe everything you read on the internet, that's how World War I got started, which is actually a way funnier joke. Still, he may have had a consistently changing job title, confidence, connections to then PlayStation bigwig Jack Tretton, and hosted Sony's 2010 E3 conference, but it didn't stop actor Jerry Lambert from moonlighting in a Nintendo advert, with his contract being terminated shortly after. Number 8. Laundry Bear – Battle Tanks Snuggle Bear is the horrifically cute mascot for American fabric softener Snuggle, and has been the victim of many parodies all over the place, from Mad TV to Robot Chicken, and this advert follows a similar, if not more tasteful, line. Here we see the eponymous Battle Tank tanks with an X, smash through the walls of the laundry room or kitchen if you're normal, and proceed to run over the poor bear, but not before ripping one of its arms and ears off and setting the other arm on fire. Not entirely defeated, however, the bear returned for a sequel advert a year later for Battle Tanks with an X Global Assault, being recovered by scientists and rebuilt in a parody of the Six Million Dollar Man, training to regain his strength and fighting power, only to be immediately run over again by the marauding tanks, and attached to the front of one like one of those poor toys on the grill of trucks. What a dirty life. This advert, of course, is a way of showing off just how manly or womanly and strong tanks are compared to fluffy toys and doing the washing. Men don't do the washing! I myself am furious and wearing this shirt for the 14th day in a row, and I like tanks. Number 7. Weird Crash. Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. The year was 1997, and the much-anticipated follow-up to the previous year's smash hit Crash Bandicoot 
was on the horizon. What better way to drive hype and anticipation than by putting a weird custom model of main character Crash in front of an unmoving background and having him gesticulate, float and otherwise gyrate around in front of it while speaking in Australian tinged fluent English and getting really close to the camera, I don't like it! This is a weird one. Up until this point, Crash hadn't spoken a single word apart from occasional wows and wouldn't speak again until an ill-informed cameo in Skyland, as you know, from the dark times we don't talk about. He says strange things like, I just flew in from the new ruins level and boy are my arms tired, implying that Crash flies, he flies now, or that he flies but only when we can't see him doing it. Sort of like a, a Schrodinger's flying crash, maybe? Anyway, then he yells, and I'm gonna step away from the microphone because it's gonna be too loud, as it was too loud in the advert. Anyway, then he yells, ha! Okay, I've come back to the microphone now. Hopefully that wasn't too loud. He yells that at the camera, and it's really bad. There's never been a proper explanation as to why this was made, but it exists now as a quirky piece of gaming history, and to serve as a reminder that you need the people making your adverts to at least know the product first. Number six. Breastfeeding, Resident Evil 4. Reportedly banned from broadcast, this French advert took a strange approach to advertising Resident Evil 4 by showing a woman breastfeeding her child while completely naked, which is fine! Obviously, the act of breastfeeding is natural and perfectly normal, but maybe it's not normal when promoting a zombie game? Uh, maybe? Anyway, as the camera pans around her showing the baby, a young boy's voice can be heard in French. Remember the place where you felt most secure, the most comfortable, the most loved. This place will never exist again. And then the woman looks around to show she is actually a zombie! Ah! Similar to the old YouTube trends of screamers, it's a bit of a cruel joke to play on unsuspecting TV viewers who would probably assume this advert to be for some kind of baby formula, so it's hardly surprising that it was pulled from syndication. Still, the zombie face on a non-zombie body is a bizarre design, and especially weird considering that there weren't really any zombies in Resident Evil 4. Number 5. You Cannot Beat Us, Nintendo Entertainment System. Mom. Aliens have hijacked the television! We are Nintendo. We challenge all players. You cannot beat us! Shown only in Australia, this 1987 advert offers a fascinating look at a time before 3D modelling had been brought to Nintendo's games, with all the featured characters rendered in the best dodgy 80s CGI money could buy. It features horrific 3D renderings of some of Nintendo's villains, such as a strangely Lego-looking Bowser, Lakitu, the dog from Duck Hunt, and, um... A Smix from Gyromite, which looks weird enough in-game, but here looks like a duck with human arms and malicious intent. The advert, mainly featuring the best-known Nintendo villains and Smix, was probably meant as a call to arms for Nintendo fans, creating a challenge to beat the games. But the robotic voices and poorly aged CGI just make it downright terrifying, and it has rightfully gone down in history as one of the freakiest adverts ever made. Number 4. Segata Sanshiro, Sega Saturn. Mario? Sonic the Hedgehog? Get out of here! Everyone knows the best video game mascot of all time is a Japanese man in a doge beating the stuffing out of everyone in order to get them to play video games. Ugh! The man, the myth, the legend that is Segata Sanshiro blessed the screens of Japan between 1997 and 1999 as a way of advertising Sega's newest system, the Sega Saturn. At first, simply attacking poor youths with a relatively healthy social life in order to send them indoors to play on their Sega Saturns, Sanshiro moved on to bigger goals, including making other martial artists explode, disguising himself as Santa Claus, and, um, going on a date? The character always leaving a room in a state of utter carnage and usually littered with unconscious non-Sega Saturn players has been credited as a major reason for the increase of Sega Saturn sales in Japan, which ultimately managed to surpass both the Mega Drive and N64. His last television appearance in a Sega advert ended with him sacrificing his life in order to save people from a wayward missile by launching it into space through the sheer power of his ankles. We will always remember you, Segata Sanshiro. Number 3. Centipede, Atari 2600. Mom, the aliens are back. 
It's amazing what you can do with some stock footage, a centipede costume, and a little imagination. Centipede was originally an arcade classic before being ported over to the Atari consoles, where, according to the game Manuel, you play as a garden gnome defending his mushroom garden from numerous creepy crawlies. Sounds innocent enough, but that's a little hard to get across in a Space Invaders-like 2D shooter, so when it came to filming an advert for the ports, it was obviously easier to get the aim of the game across via a Little Shop of Horrors-esque montage of centipedes coming out of the game and devouring helpless players before assuming their identities and getting into bed with their wives- EXCUSE ME, WHAT?! Based on this advert alone, I don't think I ever want to play this game, thank you. Do you? Number 2. Life is short, play more. Xbox. There's nothing like a video game advert for reminding you about the ever-encroaching inevitability of death. Which is probably why this advert was very banned by the UK Independent Television Commission after over 130 complaints from the public in 2002. The advert itself literally follows a man's life as he is projectile launched from his mother's birth zone and soars through the air, progressively growing older over the course of a minute, screaming the entire time, before crashing down into his own grave, followed by the line, Life is short, play more. Created as a way of advertising the original Xbox console and unleashed on Europe in March of 2002, Microsoft apparently considered the advert to be a positive statement about life, but considering that the lineup of complaining viewers included a pregnant woman, the recently bereaved, and sufferers of major illnesses, it's probably best to side with the ITC on this one, who said the following. The final scene of a body smashing into its grave was unnecessary and has caused considerable distress. Oh dear, Microsoft. Number 1. Baby. PlayStation 3. Have you ever watched something and been slightly subconsciously paranoid that it could be a supervillain trying to brainwash you? Because this is one of those times! This bizarre attempt at a talking point by PlayStation was released onto television networks in 2006 and proceeded to destroy the minds of everyone who saw it emotionally, that is, although probably literally too. This 30 second long advert shows nothing more than a plastic baby sitting in an empty white room opposite the new PS3 console before proceeding to do… a. Uh, uh, just watch. <laughs> this was the first in a line of peculiar adverts commissioned by Sony for a $150 million campaign called Play Beyond, all set in a white room and featuring different objects such as an exploding Rubik's Cube, a rally truck, a pile of bones, and a dragon. Some of these were to advertise specific games, such as Lair, Motorstorm, Resistance Fall of Man, but others were simply there to be abstract representations of the PS3's capabilities as a console. And then there was the baby. Yes, the baby advert is definitely the most memorable of the bunch by virtue of how unsettling it is, as was its obvious intent. If you wanted to read into it, maybe it represents appealing to your inner child. Perhaps it represents a toy's realization that it is now obsolete to its owner in the face of this new technology. Or maybe it's just an advert relying way too much on being esoteric for its own good. PlayStation had previously utilized the weird angle for its adverts for the PlayStation 2, with videos being made by surreal video makers such as Chris Cunningham, and more memorably, by David Lynch himself. Lynch made a series of adverts for the PS2 in an ad campaign called The Third Place, but it says a lot when a strangely animated plastic doll is more memorable than something created by one of the most visionary directors to ever live. So maybe the baby advert was effective. Maybe. And that's our list. There are loads of strange, peculiar, and downright odd video game adverts out there on the internet, so sound off about them in the comments below. You can follow Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon. Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.